is Dr. Webster. She's our oncologist and uh, breast health specialist, and she's going to share a little bit about um, myths about breast cancer. And then she said if you have any questions, she wants it to be interactive. Uh, but first, let me just welcome everyone here tonight and say it's so great to see many of you who are patients and many of you who aren't patients. I'm going to kind of all like turn around and around so I'm talking to all of you at different times. Um, and it's really, this is so fun. It's really great to be all together as women um, for an event where we can talk about health issues specific to women and specifically, you know, breast cancer and breast health. And I just love the energy here. It just feels wonderful. So uh, tonight I thought I would talk about myths and facts about breast cancer. So I made a little list of 10 things. And it's not a test, so you can, um, you know, think in your own mind, or if you want to talk with your neighbors, phone a friend, and like volunteer what you think the answer is, you can. But we're just going to go down the list and talk about it. So number one, wearing an underwire bra increases your risk for breast cancer. Is that a fact, or is that fiction? Fiction. 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 It feels right. like a fact. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it doesn't increase your risk for breast cancer, and actually for a long time we did not have any studies that, that looked at this. The way um, researchers tackled that question was to say that women with larger breasts who wear an underwire bra were not at higher risk of getting breast cancer compared to women with smaller breasts, so they must not have a higher risk of breast cancer. But they actually did a study in Seattle in 2014, and um, they looked at a huge population of women who had breast cancer and those who didn't have breast cancer, and looked at bra wearing of all kinds, you know, regular bras, sports bras, underwire bras, and there is absolutely no risk, whether you wear a bra, don't wear a bra, wear an underwire bra, wear your bra at night while you sleep, does not increase your risk for breast cancer, okay? So yay, you all got that one. <laughs> All right, number two, breast cancer is preventable. What do you think? Is breast cancer preventable? No, no. You, know, you can cut down on some of your risk factors. Yeah, you're exactly right. So unfortunately, breast cancer is not preventable. So we have no way to prevent breast cancer. We, you can cut down on risk factors. And do you guys want to shout out like some ways to do that? Natural deodorant. Pardon me? Natural deodorant. Natural de deodorant. Um, I'm going to say, let's leave that on the table as a maybe, because we're going to talk about that, okay? Don't smoke. Yeah. Don't smoke? No, so I'm smoking, <laughs> yep, not smoking decreases your risk. What else? Exercise. <laughs> Exercise does decrease Excess. your risk of breast Excess. cancer. Excess. Amazing. It decreases your risk of breast cancer, and if you've had breast cancer, <laughs> exercise decreases your risk of cancer coming back. What's the definition of exercise? Moving. But how much do you have to move? Aerobic activity. Cardio. Okay, aerobic activity is so it's defined as anything that gets your heart rate up enough that you're short of breath. And for how much? 20 minutes. Okay, 20 minutes. And how many times a week? Actually, it's 30 minutes five times a week. So 30 minutes five times a week. <laughs> will decrease your risk of breast cancer. Okay. But yeah, good job. Okay, other things to decrease your risk of breast cancer. Breastfeeding. Breastfeeding, excellent. Breastfeeding decreases your risk of breast cancer. Now, we can't just go as breastfeeding. <laughs> <laughs> um, or maybe we could, I don't know, but in general, you know, the whole is decision you Yeah, that's a different thing. <laughs> You have to make that decision at the time <laughs> if you have children uh, to breastfeed. But I, I wish that we would pull that. Breastfeeding does decrease your risk for breast cancer. What else? Having children, getting pregnant. So women who do not have children, I'm in that category. So women who have never been pregnant have a higher risk of breast cancer. Women who have been pregnant, and particularly if you're pregnant by the age of 20, so if you have your first pregnancy at the age of 20, your breast cancer risk goes down. Um, decrease uh, body weight. So decrease fat, decrease body weight. As we get older, 
and postmenopausal, we still make estrogen. We have less estrogen than men, okay? We have less estrogen than men um, when we're postmenopausal, but we still make estrogen, still make estrogen. And the way we do that is not our ovaries, but our fat cells um, convert hormones into estrogen. So the more body fat we have, the more estrogen we're gonna make, and the higher our risk of breast cancer as we get older. Um, other things that can decrease your risk, eat less fat intake and eating more fresh fruits and vegetables. So the guidance from the experts who study this is two thirds of your plate when you eat a meal, two thirds of your plate should be fruits, vegetables, grains, and only one third should be meat and dairy. Let's go to number three. Breast cancers are always driven by female hormones. I'm going to say true after what you just said. Okay, so somebody's going to say true after what I just said. All right, well the trick in this question is I said always. And so the answer is false, but breast cancers, most breast cancers are driven by female hormones. So most breast cancers have the estrogen receptor on them. And that means that estrogen in our bodies feeds them. But a small percentage of breast cancers, you know, a quarter or fewer breast cancers do not have estrogen receptors and do not have progesterone receptors. Those are called hormone receptor negative breast cancers. So those tend to be more aggressive cancers and um, they tend to occur more often in young women and we cannot treat them with blocking hormones with medications like we can hormone positive breast cancers. All right, number four. If you don't have a family history of breast cancer, or if you don't have a family history of cancer, you have a low chance of getting breast cancer. False, true or false? That is false. That is false. So, and this is commonly, this is commonly misunderstood. Um, if a hundred women in get breast cancer, five of them will have a genetic predisposition to breast cancer. Maybe six, five or six out of a hundred. And the rest of them, 94 of them, will not have any genetic predisposition and will not have a family history that suggests breast cancer. Um, and as an example, I had no family history of breast cancer. And at 32, I felt a little lump that I thought was nothing and I turned out to have breast cancer. Um, I didn't have a gene, I, I didn't have any known risk factors, except not having a baby at age 20, but that by itself shouldn't make you have breast cancer. So most people who get breast cancer don't have risk factors, don't have a family history, don't have a genetic history. So don't let that lull you into thinking you're low risk. All right, wearing deodorant increases your risk for breast cancer. Let's say wearing deodorant that you buy at the store that has the so called aluminum and things in it. It is, in fact, not true. Um, now, if you know, there have been multiple studies about this because it has been a concern by many people for many, many decades. Does wearing deodorant increase your risk of breast cancer? It makes sense, right? Because we're putting it under our arms and we're getting it on our breasts. And, um, there have been multiple studies done. They're not all perfect studies, but the scientific evidence we have says that there is no risk. But since you brought up the question, I wanted to see, you know, is there anything you want to add or say or? No, because that's just what I, you know, that's what they, it's what you were told. That's what you yeah. hear, you yeah. know, and yeah. yeah. It's and interesting to, you know, to hear you. Yeah, it's been a concern, and I was even concerned about it, and, you know, um, I really looked into the data because I wanted to see, well, are these studies real, and were they were they sponsored by Van Deodorant, you know, <laughs> like, who's paying for these studies? But no, the studies, I mean, there are good studies that really are reassuring that um, deodorant does not cause breast That's cancer. That's good to know. Yeah. Okay, if you injure your breast, it increases your risk for getting breast cancer in that breast. The answer is technically false based on science. However, I will say, I have seen a number of women who have come in because they had an injury to their breast and then they, de they were found to have breast cancer. Now, most scientists explain this by saying, well, 
they had an injury to their breasts, so they started feeling their breasts and paying attention to their breasts, and then they noticed there was a lump that had already been there. I don't know if I entirely believe that because we know that inflammation is associated with cancer. So any type of inflammation that's chronic and long-term, it can increase the risk for cancer. So I will say the science says this is false. Um, I think it's probably false that there's not a direct correlation, but I think if you did have an injury that was maybe ongoing and you had chronic inflammation, it could certainly increase the, the risk of breast cancer based on other signs. So. Breast cancer can always be found on a mammogram. False. 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 You guys are so good. <laughs> <laughs> that is false. That is false. Okay, so this is really important because why do we do mammograms? What does a mammogram do? It catches early stage breast cancer. And when we say that, mammograms are best at detecting really tiny changes on uh, in the breast. So little, if we look at it, we see you know little specks that are white and they're very difficult to see. Most of the time, mammograms are picking up little changes that we would never feel, there's no tumor there. And so, the benefit of mammograms is picking up very, very early breast cancer. What if you have a breast lump that you feel is the size of a golf ball, and you feel it, and you go, oh my gosh, I have a lump there. You go get a mammogram, and the mammogram is negative. What, what should you do then? Right, so what you should do then is remember that I told you that a negative mammogram is not enough in that case, okay? So if you have a lump that's new that you can feel and you get a negative mammogram, a negative mammogram is not enough. A negative mammogram is saying, well, we don't see that lump on the mammogram, so we need to do an ultrasound or another study. And if we don't see it on the ultrasound, we need to biopsy, okay? So a new lump that you feel that has not been there, you're concerned about, ultimately the only way to prove it's not breast cancer is to do a biopsy of it. If there's an ultrasound that says, hey, this looks very reassuring, it's a cyst, it's not cancer, it's not solid, we're gonna follow it, that's okay, you don't need a biopsy of that. But don't let someone say, oh, your mammogram was fine, so you're okay. And I've seen this before on a number of cases, and there's a type of breast cancer called lobular breast cancer. It's 15% of breast cancers are of the lobular subtype. Lobular cancers are notorious for being completely invisible on mammogram. And the reason is the cells, as they grow, they don't grow and form like a ball, like a, like a golf ball, like a tumor, because the cells don't stick together. The hallmark of lobular cancer is the cells, they kind of um, infiltrate like salt and pepper into the breast tissue. And so women can develop a pretty sizable lump, and I've seen lumps this big, that women say, I've had this lump and it just keeps growing, and they have a mammogram and it doesn't show anything. And their provider says, well, your mammogram is fine. You know. <coughs> so remember, mammogram is for early detection, early changes. It can also sometimes see a larger cancer that's there, but it does not rule out cancer in a lump that you can feel. Okay. All right, fertility treatments increase your risk for breast cancer, number eight. False. Good test taking skills. <laughs> yeah, so it's false. It's false. Yeah, false. It's been a real concern for women who can't get pregnant and they are doing fertility treatments, which in involves injecting hormones, and um, you know, they worry that it increases their risk for breast cancer. It does not. This has been studied. Um, there has been some controversy over the results, and then if more studies were done. I think it's been conclusive, conclusively ruled out that it increases the risk of breast cancer. Yeah. But with HRT. Okay, that's a great question. Hormone replacement therapy. So, how many of you have taken hormone replacement therapy after you were like district at any point? It's okay. There's some in there. <laughs> um, so there's two kinds of hormone replacement therapy. If you have a uterus still, when at the time you go on hormones, your hormones have to be estrogen with progesterone together, and that's to protect your uterus. 
If you don't have a uterus anymore, you've had a hysterectomy, you only need estrogen. What the data have shown in this huge study called the Women's Health Initiative is that estrogen alone, hormone replacement therapy, does not increase the risk of breast cancer. Estrogen with progestin does. So hormone replacement therapy with something like Premarin uh, does increase the risk for breast cancer. It also increases the risk for cardiovascular disease and stroke. And so for that reason, now women who are postmenopausal, if they need hormone replacement therapy, the recommendation is to use it for a limited period of time, about five years after menopause, unless there's a really strong reason to use it beyond that. Carrying a cell phone in your bra increases your risk for breast cancer. <laughs> Everybody pull their cell phones out of their bra <laughs> right now. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, that might not be a, a thing around here, but, you know, in parts of the country, I mean, in, on the West Coast, there are a lot of women who stick their cell phone in their bra. It's a thing. It is a thing. You know, they stick it. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's convenient. They kind of stick it right down in between their cleavage. And so that's been a question. Is that bad? Does it cause breast cancer? Um, it, this has actually been studied. And no, it does not increase the risk of breast cancer. So you can safely jog with your phone and your bra. You might not have the nicest contour, but <laughs> you have a better chance of surviving breast cancer if you have a mastectomy instead of a lumpectomy. False. That is false. Thank you. So that is false. So if you have the choice of a lumpectomy or a mastectomy with breast cancer, Mastectomy, which is a perfectly fine choice, and I obviously made that choice for myself, but a mastectomy decreases your risk of a local recurrence in the breast, but it will not improve your survival. So you're not at, you're not going to live more years if you have a mastectomy compared to a lumpectomy. And I think that's something that I want women to know because uh, what's the risk of What's the risk of everyone in this room getting breast cancer if you haven't had it already? One in eight. One in eight, yes, one in eight. So one in eight women during their lifetime right now will get breast cancer. And I have to say, when I started my training in medicine, that number was one in 12. Then it went to one in 11, and one in 10, and one in nine. And I think it's gonna keep going, getting smaller. Um, Part of that is because we have better screening, so we're picking up breast cancers, you know, really early. Part of it is because um, we're getting fatter, honestly, as a nation. We're, we're eating more fat, we're exercising less. Part of it is we're being exposed to a lot of chemicals in uh, that, were, that were made in the 1950s and became part of our society, and they're in everything. You know, they're in this, uh, this countertop, they're in everything that's in this basket, they're in the makeup we wear, um, they're in the plastics we drink out of. And so all of these chemicals concentrate in breast tissue and are probably also increasing our risk for breast cancer. So the important thing is we can't prevent it. We can be not, you know, not let fear keep us from doing what we need to do, which is get a mammogram. I know it's not comfortable. Um, I know a man designed it because they would have never designed it that way <laughs> if some part of their anatomy had to be smashed. <laughs> uh, but it can really, really help you, you know. And if you find a lump or if you get diagnosed with breast cancer, 99% chance that you're going to be cured. It's going to be a bump in the road and you're going to go on to live, you know, full life if it's caught early. Even if you develop metastatic disease, we women are living with metastatic disease very well. Living, you know, full lives. We have great treatments now. I mean we have immunotherapy, we have hormone therapies, we have monoclonal antibodies. So the treatments for breast cancer have changed dramatically. I mean you've probably seen all these commercials on TV for, you know, this pill and that pill and, and it's true. I have breast cancer survivors um, with metastatic disease, who have had brain metastases, liver metastases, lung metastases, 25 years ago, and they're still living full and wonderful lives. Now, 
you know, obviously that doesn't happen for everyone, but again, I think fear is what keeps a lot of women from um, doing something when they first notice a change in their breast. So I want you all to promise each other, okay, because I know you have friends here, you have friends, that if, you're, if you have, feel something in your breast or you're concerned about something and you're scared to talk to your doctor, that you will talk to your friend, okay? You're gonna to talk to your friend and tell your friend, and your friend who is here, who you tell, is gonna encourage you and help you to take the next steps, okay? So use the power of women's friendship and, and love for each other to um, help each other, because, you know, we need to survive. I mean, we're gonna change, we have to change the world, you know? So, um, so that's all I have.